Oh, man. Hello, world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Now, you may recognize our next guest as one of the original Broadway cast members from the outstanding Spring Awakening, or recently for her fantastic work in SpongeBob SquarePants, the musical, as the great Sandy Cheeks. But now you can catch her on Broadway in the hilarious musical comedy Tootsie, adapted from the 1982 film. And believe me when I say adapted, they have done incredible things with this show. I'm so pumped she's here. Guys, the great Lily Cooper's in the building. Are you guys excited? Can I hear a little bit? And I want to hear at home, too. Are you? All right, perfect. That's where you need to be right now because she is amazing. We're going to bring her out here in just a moment. But first, I believe we have a peek at the show, so let's go ahead and run that clip. I am a great actor, Stan. You have one of the worst reputations in this town. No one will hire you. Something's wrong with Biscuit. Next. Carla, I threw it all away for Get a year. People hate you. No one hates me. No one likes you. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, yes, hello. Hi, my name is Dorothy Michaels. A one, two, watch me, fussy arm, fussy arm. Julie Tamor, Julie Tamor. <laughs> this is textbook Broadway, people. Don't you find being a woman right now complicated? Right now, extremely, yeah. yeah. I won't let you down. Let's make her feel at home, ladies and gentlemen. Give me some uproarious laparos. Lily Cooper's right here. Come on. Lily. Oh, my gosh. Lily, congratulations. Thank you. Like, huge Thank congratulations. So Not even just on this amazing show, but last yeah. night. Last night? We opened the show last night. Hold for applause. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's huge. That's yeah. so exciting. It was so exciting. We had such a fun time. It was fit. The audience was filled with the most incredible people. So it felt very surreal to be performing for some idols. How are you awake right now? I'm sort of not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so fantastic. Uh, yeah, so last night was opening night. And you know, people, uh, you look all over the internet, people love this show, and rightfully so. It's a fantastic show. I saw, thanks to your Instagram, I think I saw this. If I can get a, this picture really quick, I thought this was amazing. Amazing. Uh, from <laughs> How cool is Broadway that? Bricks, I believe it is. Uh, look at you, you're yeah. a Lego. I know, I'm a Lego. That? It's that's the second Lego I've been turned into. Were, were you I was a Sandy Lego also. That's a lot. I mean, I feel like you've, you've made it once you've turned yeah. into a Lego, right? Once you've been bricked, that's it, yeah, man. Yeah, that's it. You've arrived. I know. It's so it's exciting. Cool. Is it fun to, to see that level of excitement, not just uh, in the theater, but outside of those four walls, to see people really responding in this way and Absolutely. art being created on, on Absolutely. the Absolutely. I think that's what I really love about this generation of Broadway shows is, is we get to see the reaction on such a closer, more intimate level, I think yeah. particularly because of social media. And we see a lot of fan art artwork and we get to really communicate with our fans um, in that very direct immediate way and it's really cool yeah, it is a really cool uh, for all the things that social media has brought this world that part is very cool yeah I do yeah. like that thing about it so um, you, let's talk a little bit about this show because I, I mentioned this briefly in my introduction you know uh, adapted inspired by but like this show you you guys have done an amazing thing with this story and, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about not just how it was adapted for stage but sort of really to better fit the current like social discussion and like to fit like modern day times and like what you guys have done with the story it's yeah 
It's pretty yeah, remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the movie is a classic, and we absolutely totally. love and adore it. Yeah. And we wanted to be honest and true to the DNA of the movie, but we knew that lifting the movie and just putting it on stage was not going to work. And so we wanted to create our own version of Tootsie. And so for today and for the stage, we turned it from a soap opera to be about a Broadway musical, which is great because it's a musical within a musical. So you get to... I, so fun. You get the backstage realm of the of the actor life, which is really fun because we get to sort of poke fun at ourselves. Um, but also in this Time's Up Me Too movement, we, we're really passionate about not having it be, um, you know, a, a, as the actress who plays Julie Nichols, not having it be about um, a man teaching a woman, right. you know, how to uh, avoid the, the sort of inappropriate men in her life. And instead, having Michael Dorsey sort of learn from Julie, quite the reverse. Yeah. And I, I think it, it makes it just so much more powerful and so relevant and relatable. A hundred percent. And I just like a fun little thing. There's a lot in there I want to unpack, but I was thinking about the musical within the musical. Surely that's led to many a meta conversation. Oh, on yes. Stage. When you guys like, do you ever get lost in which musical you're referring to when you're talking about like. Absolutely. Musical? Yeah. I mean, so like we're playing actors in a show and who want to make the show better. And we are actors in a show who just want to create a great show, you know, so it's so meta. We'll be like in each other's dressing rooms talking about, you know, how do we make this scene work? Work, what can we do? And it's just like, okay, what are we doing? Are we playing our characters? Are we really ourselves? Like, this is just so weird. Yeah. Like, who, who are we talking about yeah, right yeah. now? Am I me or am I later right, me in right. the thing with me? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, you, you know, and you have you play, uh, you know, an, an, an amazing character. Uh, and you talk about the honoring the classic of the film. Obviously, you guys are finding your own spin. You're telling your own version of this story. Was there any, uh, not concern about fans or anything like that, but like, uh, what did you think when you realized you were going to be a part of this legacy, of this this thing that, that has been around for so long and by such a phenomenal actress yeah. made famous as well? I mean, like, big shoes to step yeah, into. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's the, the biggest possible shoes to step into. And I, and I think the thing that made it easier for me is is knowing that we are we really created our own version of Tootsie. And I will never be Jessica Lange. I could never fill the shoes of Jessica Lange. Nobody could. And so I, I felt relieved knowing that I was coming into this show given the opportunity to create Lily Cooper's version of Julie Nichols as opposed to, uh, you know, just recreating or attempting to recreate Jessica's version of Julie Nichols. And our Julies are, are quite different. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I'm not, uh, my Julie is not a single mother. Uh, I, I, I'm not dating the director. Um, very strongly and passionately sort of dealing with how the inappropriate men in her life, uh, you know, uh, affect her. And uh, really passionate about what she does and makes sacrifices for what she does. And that is what Michael, I think, sees in her and what, and what makes him fall in love with her. Well, that was, and I'm so glad that we started talking about Julie because one of the things, and I mentioned this upstairs, that, and I thought maybe I was crazy for thinking this, but I feel like there is a parallel in the characters you play. You look at, like, Sandy Cheeks, like a very strong and, and very independent uh, individual, and, like, there's this, you could draw a parallel line, and I'm curious, are these traits that, that you look for when you're looking for your next role? Are you seeking out these characters? That, is this a character that you like playing and, like, being in this, in, in this sort of world? Yeah, yeah. I think less than um, seeking it out, I think it's actually actually sort of a part of who I it's am. It, yeah, yeah, it's sort of finding me. And I, I felt very close to Sandy Cheeks and I feel very close to Julie Nichols. <laughs> and I think it, it it's because they both have this this strength and this knowledge of what they do and, and the world around them. And and I think there there are also moments in both shows where they sort of teach the the dudes around them <laughs> what yeah. what is the right thing to be doing. In this um, world. How, how did you even find your way to Tootsie? How did this all start for you? Yeah, so I was in SpongeBob just yeah. last year. Woo. And um, I saw, I, I got an audition for it. And it was so, it was such an exciting prospect. Because uh, I loved the movie. Yeah. Loved Jessica Lange. But also I look nothing like Jessica Lange. And so I think there was a sort of an, uh, an immediate um, insecurity that maybe I wasn't right for this part. But... I read the breakdown, and the breakdown just felt so similar to me. And my mother literally said, she was like, you don't really have to do much. Like, this is you. And show up. And 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 that really helped. And, and I did. And I showed up. And and luckily, I was, I was the right person for the job. And um, we did an out-of-town tryout in Chicago last year, which was also really fun, because we had done an out-of-town tryout of SpongeBob the year before. Um, 
And that was really great to sort of try out the show with uh, a smart audience out in Chicago. And then we had the time to really fine tune it and make it the best Broadway show that we could possibly make it. And here we are. So amazing. Do you, you come from a phenomenally talented, uh, phenomenally talented family. Thank you. Do you often find yourself calling up mom, going back to the family, saying, like, what do you think of this? And how, what do you think of that? Like, how often do you have those conversations? Like, probably daily. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my, I, I grew up in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. My mom still lives in the apartment that I grew up in. So I, it's incredible. I can go there whenever I want to, which is amazing. I get to see my mom all the time, and it's so awesome. So, yeah, whenever I need feedback, I, I can call my dad, and my dad has been in 16 Broadway shows so he knows what he's doing he's been around the block um, and it's really it, it's it's just such a great resource honestly did you ever when you were growing up not, not to turn this into like a therapy session but I'm fascinated by I this like that. did I you it. ever uh, when you were growing up and you found your way to the stage we know that you like your your Broadway debut you were still in high school yeah. while it was happening did you ever feel pressure to enter this world or do you feel like they gave you space to find your way and it happened to be the same way I, the the latter it, it definitely was um, a, an incredibly supportive environment that my parents set for me but they weren't ever expecting or assuming that I would go in I think uh Part of them was like, well, it's in the blood, and we wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Um, but they were open to any path that I would have chosen. And when they discovered that it was something that I wanted to do, they knew that I have seen the ups and downs of this yeah. life. You know, I've seen my dad star in Broadway shows, but I've also seen him on unemployment for months at a time. And that is the actor's life. And so they were confident in the fact that I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. Do you do you take anything? I mean, just the experience alone of being on Broadway and in high school at the same time. Fun thing to juggle, I'm sure. <laughs> do do you have stuff that you learned during that experience that you still carry with you to this day? Yeah, I mean, I think that what was such a unique experience was that of that was it was hard to take it in at the time. I think I felt like this is so cool. I'm 16. I'm in a Broadway show. I'm yeah. you know, yeah. you know, studying for my SATs, and then I'm going to go sign autographs after my Broadway show, and then I have to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to go back to school. So it was just very surreal and such a whirlwind. And thinking back on that schedule, I do not know how I had the energy to do it, but. It's because I was 16. Yeah. I would not be able to do that now. Um, was your diet terrible, too, when you were 16? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Eating Doritos and drinking Mountain Dew like it's <laughs> nothing. Just finish the day out like a hummingbird. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. it didn't matter. 100% sugar. Yeah, got me exactly. It. Whatever sugar you can get your hands on. 100%. Because we all had metabolisms back then. <laughs> <Exactly>. like, <laughs> I wish. Uh, well, that's right. I keep this. I think it's almost 13 years in June. I could be wrong. 13 about years. It. 13 yeah. years in June. Yeah, we started when I was 15. Wow. And that was in 2006. Long time ago. I feel old. You're not old. Thanks. You just done, you just did a lot at an early age, so you're naturally going to feel old when you talk early. about it. But you're definitely not old yet. Hmm. Uh, you got plenty of time. Talk to let's go back to Tootsie for a second, because I could talk to you all day about Spring Awakening and your other shows. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, talk about the amazing cast. We got to see a little bit of them in the video. We got to see them in Lego form. Yeah. Uh, but, but talk about working with them and what that's been like, especially uh, with Santino and like building chemistry and just like because yeah. you have a, you have a really tricky relationship. You guys have to navigate on absolutely, stage. So absolutely. Just what's that been like? Well, I I describe it as a masterclass in comedy because every single person in that room, principals to the on, to the ensemble to all of the creative team are comedic geniuses, and so it it really helps you step up your game because not only do you want to be good, but you're learning so much from everyone. And I feel like I have learned so much from everyone. Santino is a true dream scene partner. He's so generous and so present all the time, every second on stage. And um, we have developed a great stage relationship. And, um, and again, it feels very meta because we're two actors playing actors. <laughs> and, and I think the thing that's, that I find particularly interesting about Julie and Dorothy's relationship is Julie is under the impression that she is in a friendship with a woman. And you know, me personally, I feel, I think, safer opening up and being honest and real about who I am to the women in my life when I first meet them. And so that's sort of how their relationship was able to uh, flourish so quickly because she developed this this trust in him, um, not knowing it was a him, yeah. and then that makes the betrayal even worse. And oh my God, yeah. 
Was it, um, in terms of you guys finding, did that happen right away? Did you guys click immediately? Do you think it's evolved over the time that you've worked on it together, just what your stage chemistry's been like and how that's grown and what that's been like as you've learned from one another? Yeah, I totally think that it has evolved. I mean, Santino and I have known each other for several years. I was a huge admirer of his work. He did a play with my dad on Broadway several years ago, Act One, yeah, and he was so fantastic in that. And then we did a, a, a reading of a musical a few years back, so we've known each other, but we never really got the the intimate uh, rehearsal relationship process. And this process really, you know, threw us in head first. And it's been almost a year now that I've been a part of it. He's been a part of it for way longer. But it, you, you can't help but just get so much tighter after that amount of time. Yeah, I was reading, um, I think a, a, it was an interview or an article, or something that had something from Santino where he was saying that... Um, you know, just by playing this character and, and viewing the world through a, a female lens, there are things that he didn't even consider that he would, he considers a pretty open-minded guy, but like he didn't even really like the price of razors. Like why are they more, and all this sort of stuff. And it was fascinating. And I'm wondering if, um, as you guys have grown, and got, if he like came to you to like sort of get your perspective and like learn more through your eyes and learn more through you, if you guys yeah. had those kind of conversations at Absolutely. all. Absolutely. We've had a lot of those conversations and, and, and it's really, I it's eye opening to me to witness uh, to witness him um, experience this too and I remember one he, he made one reference to uh, f sort of finally understanding a why it might not feel safe to walk home to the train by yourself as a woman and and it's just something that you know when you have the privileges of a man every day in your life you don't really think about and we had that those kinds of discussions all the way down to are my feet supposed to look like this after walking in heels for two hours you know what I mean so like that kind of stuff um, it's pretty we're gonna go uh, we've got some questions we're gonna take a question from Twitter in just a moment uh, oh. but I, we can't talk about Tootsie the musical without talking about the music mm. uh, it's absolutely amazing how would you describe the sound of this musical for people that because you know you, you think of different mu I, I guess maybe Spongebob might be an exception like you have it in your head of like what the music's going to sound like yeah. but like this show uh, everything about it just kind of blew me away it's yeah. kind of amazing so how, how would you describe uh, I think it has I think it has a David Yazbek signature which is, is hard to describe but um, it, it just you hear it and you and you you think David Yazbek yeah. because it is so brilliant and so wonderful to listen to and to sing. Um, and what I love about it is that I really feel like genre genre wise it it sort of runs the gamut because he writes so specifically for characters and for character actors and each person each actor in the show sort of has their signature and you know sandy the neurotic actress has these patter songs and 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 uh michael has these yearning songs and and i have this beautiful sort of a um, melodic ballad and and so he writes so specifically for characters and um also there's an uh an overture and an entract in the show and it's just, so it's so classically Broadway. It's so old school Broadway, and it just feels so nostalgic. It really does. Uh, it's a ton of fun. And I imagine if you guys, if we're only, I, there's just so much energy in the room. So I got to imagine you guys are having a blast putting this show on. We we're really having are. a blast watching it. It's just a beautiful Thanks. time. I cannot recommend people see this show hard enough. You got to get out there. <laughs> uh, TootsieMusical.com is where you can find your tickets. You're crazy if you're not already there. Uh, let me grab some questions here. The first one's from Twitter. This is at Casey and... My God, that's a lot of numbers. All right, Casey518. You know, it's from Casey. Casey <laughs> wants to know, how is performing this musical different from the other musicals that you've been on? Um, every musical sort of has its unique experience. Um, th this surprisingly has been somewhat similar to SpongeBob in the sense that we are recreating characters that people already know. Yeah. However, we are defining them in our own way. Um, it's this big a sort of extravagant blockbuster of a musical, which is so fun, which is very different from Spring Awakening, for example, which was very intimate and small and uh, sort of quiet in terms of scale in, in um, relation to one another. Uh, so I would just say it's fun and fabulous. It's so funny. We make each other laugh on stage, honestly. I, I don't know how you get through the show, honestly. <laughs> it's hard. Um, 
uh, and not to, because I know like this show is where you're at right now, but you know, you've just done two really big kind of blockbuster level shows. Is there like a little part of your brain that's like down the road you want to try something intimate again? Are you yearning for Spring Awakening days? Yeah, I mean a little bit. I yeah. love having I love having the eclectic career that I've luckily had, and you know what I what I really thrive for is to do a play. A play would be so fun to do. Uh, not that it would be any easier, but just, you know, not sort of having to focus on, on your voice and on your body. It it would be a relief, I just think. Just to kind of dig in, get really analytical <laughs> and kind of feel all of it out. And yeah, and just exactly. like focus on that. It would yeah. be fun, yeah. Uh, do you have any in the room? I do. I have two. And the first one is right over here. Hey, come on down. Hello, Lily. Hi, I love your onesie. Oh, thank you. I love your hair. It's thank awesome. <laughs> so we have an on-site question, and it's uh, tailored to your character in Tootsie, and it is, um, what characteristic would you bring from your character in Tootsie to yourself? That's a great question. She is, I find her to be incredibly giddy and optimistic, and I think as a sort of jaded New Yorker myself, <laughs> I could use a little bit of that. Bit. I could use a little bit of that. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get jaded vibe from you at all. <laughs> well, and I don't just depends mean on, on stage because the lights are on and the camera's live and there's people here. I mean, when we say hello, you very yeah. well. You've, well, that's because you're, you're, you're learning from, from Julie. Right, exactly. I'm learning it. from Julie. There it is. So you're just channeling that in. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. Well, thank you. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, do I have time for one more? I'd love to get one more question in if we got one more. Perfect. Uh, come on down. Hey. Hi. Um, so you were talking a lot about how the show's kind of been updated to the times, and mm -hmm. I was wondering if there's a specific line or a moment from the show said by your character or any character that just stuck out to you as really particularly relevant or like important to women? Absolutely. Um, I, in the end of the show, this was a, a line that was actually added between Chicago and, and the Broadway production, and I felt so passionate about it. Um, it's basically at the end of the show, so I hope this isn't a spoiler alert, but everybody pretty much knows the story of Tootsie. Uh, Michael is apologizing to Julie, and he says something along the lines of, it was disrespectful, and I know that. And Julie says, no, you don't. You don't know that. You think that you know, because you walked a mile in a woman's shoes, but walk a hundred, walk a thousand, and then fall a thousand more. There's so much you don't know about so much. And I love that line so much. It feels so honest and raw and real. And it's about the fact that this man is identifies as a man, has been walking through the world as a man his entire life, and really can't understand what it is like to be a woman. And that's, that's Julie's sort of message to him. That's, um, thank you for your question. Uh, certainly a powerful line. And uh, did you say that was added in, that wasn't always a part that? It wasn't there in Chicago. No, huh. it, was, it was sort of something that, a discussion that Robert Horn, the book writer, um, and I had, you know, in between the, the two productions. Wow. I mean, I think that's the answer to my final follow-up. But, like, when you look back at how the show started and your time with it and where it is now, uh, would you identify that as one of the, like, the biggest changes? Have other things changed or, or grown as well? Little yeah. things here and there? Right? I think that would be one of yeah. the biggest changes. I think the relationship between Michael and Julie, uh, slash Dorothy and Julie, has been the, the biggest change. It's just very... It's very specific now, and um, I think they both learn from each other, but it's so beautiful to see Michael learn from Julie. It's pretty amazing, too, that you're, you have this opportunity and that it's such a collaborative process that you guys can have these conversations and, and grow these characters mm -hmm. like as you're growing with it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, thanks. Oh, man, jealous. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are wonderful, and I'm so sorry we're out of time. i got to wrap oh, things up because I can hang out with you all day. But uh, I want to thank everyone. Thank you for uh, tweeting those watching at home and sending us questions, and thank you guys for asking amazing questions as well. I will remind the universe at large, head over to tootsiemusical.com, grab yourself some tickets, and go have an amazing night uh, and watch this amazing show. And speaking of amazing things, right here is an amazing person. So let me hear a whole bunch of noise and join me in thanking the great Lily Cooper for being Thank here. Thank you, guys.